What up everybody? Back again. Today we are looking at finding the volume of rectangular prisms without unit cubes. So let's open up the box and see what Instructor Beats has brought us today. Our objective for today, today I will be able to find the volume of prisms without unit cubes by using the formula. So we've been working on finding volume with our rectangular prisms that are made of unit cubes. Today we're going to take that next step and take those out of the equations. Let's take a look to see what I'm talking about. So here's what I mean by having a rectangular prism made out of unit cubes, right? So it's kind of like having them built out of those Legos or, or the Minecraft blocks, right? And you can see visually the unit cubes that are making up the rectangular prism. Today we're going to be taking this prism and it's going to look like this. You're not going to see the unit cubes that make it up. So instead of asking ourselves how many unit cubes make up the shape, we're going to be asking ourselves how many unit cubes can we fit inside of this box. We're still finding the volume, it's still the exact same thing, except our rectangular prisms are going to look like this today. Our formula for volume is going to be the exact same thing. We're still going to be finding the area of the base and then multiplying it by how many layers we have. And when we don't have the area of the base, we're going to decompose it into our length and our width and use our area formula to find our area of the base and then multiply it by the height. So we're going to be using both of our formulas, volume equals area of the base times the height or volume equals length times width times height. Both of them are going to give us the exact same answer. We just have to figure out which formula we need for the question that we're answering. Our steps for finding volume are going to be the exact same thing. We're going to find the area of the base. We're going to find the height or how many layers we have. And then we're going to use the formula to multiply instead of using repeated addition. So here's the I do problem. It's asking us what is the volume of the prism? Or in other words, how many unit cubes do I need to fill this box? Okay, so I need to know the area of the base. Now, I don't know the area of the base because it didn't tell us what that was, okay? But I can use the length and the width. So for this one, I'm going to have to decompose my area of the base into length times width and then multiply it by the height. Here's an awesome way to help you find the length, the width, and the height. I call it finding your peace sign because it kind of looks like a Y, like you're putting your fingers up in the peace sign. What you want to do is find a vertex or where li three lines are meeting, okay? And you want to be able to draw the height off of that or trace the edge of the rectangular prism for the height, the width, and the length all from that same spot. What that's going to help you do is just make sure that you don't get confused about which numbers that you have. So here I have three for my width, so I'm going to go ahead and put three meters in there, okay? My length is going to be how long the box is. Now I don't see it right here, but if I look opposite parallel, it tells me eight meters, okay? So I know that my length is going to be eight meters. And then my height right here, again, I don't have the number right here, but if I look opposite parallel, that's four meters, which means this also has to be four meters. So to find the volume, I need to do eight times three. That's gonna tell me the area of the base. And then I'm gonna have four layers of that. So my volume is gonna equal 24 meters squared. That's gonna be the area of my base times the four. Okay, so I have four layers of 24. So when I multiply 24 times four, I get 96 cubic meters, okay? Now, before we are using cubic units, right? Because we were trying to figure out how many unit cubes fit inside. Well, the unit for this question is meters, okay? So instead of saying cubic units, we're gonna say cubic meters because the meters is our unit. So now that we're doing these pictures without the cubes, we're going to have a unit next to our number to let us know what that number represents. If we just put three, we could say it was three inches, we could say it was three gallons, we could say it was three miles, okay? So we need to know the unit. So when you write it, we're no longer saying cubic units, we're gonna say cubic meters if the unit is meters. If it was feet, we would say cubic feet. If it was inches, we'd say cubic inches, all right? Let's do a we do and practice this a little bit more. So here it says, the prism below has a base that has an area of 24 square feet. What is the volume? So for this one, they're giving us the area of the base. So we can use this formula. We don't need to do the length times the width 
because they're telling us what the area of the base is right here. It's 24. So when I plug in my information, I can just put a 24 for the area of the base. So these questions are actually really nice when they tell you the area of the base. Now, if it didn't say the words, the base was 24 square feet, I know this is area because it said square, okay? It was square units, and I know that area is measured in square units because we're trying to cover a two-dimensional shape with squares. So then the picture is also giving me the height right here. So I know my height is 10. So I know one layer has 24 cubes in it, and then I have 10 layers of cubes if I'm trying to fill this box. So if I do 24 times 10, I know that it's going to take me 240 cubic feet to fill this box up. Let's do a you try problem. So for this one, it says how many cubic centimeters is the box? It's asking you for cubic units, right? And so in other words, this question is basically just asking you, what is the volume? You know it has to be volume because the units, centimeters, were cubed. If you're ready to try this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause. If you want to do it with me, that's awesome too. We can do, do another we do problem. Hopefully you just push pause and you're checking your answer right now. So the first thing I want to do, okay, is I want to see, can I find the area of my base? It didn't tell me the area of the base. So I'm going to have to think about this as length times width times height. Okay, I had to decompose the area of the base into length times width. And then that's going to tell me what the area of the base is then I can multiply that by my layers. I'm going to find my peace sign right here, this first front vertex, and where I can find the height, I can find the length, and I can find the width all from the same spot. Again, that's not something you have to do, it just helps me stay organized. So my length, okay, I don't have a number right here, but I look opposite parallel, that was nine centimeters. So my length is going to be nine centimeters. My width, again, opposite parallel looks like four, so I'm gonna have four centimeters. And then I can see that my height opposite parallel was two, so my height is going to be two centimeters. When I multiply that, I'm gonna follow my order of operations and go left to right here. So nine times four is 36. I now know the area of my base was 36 square centimeters. And I have two layers of 36. So when I multiply that, I'm going to get 72 cubic centimeters, and I'm gonna use the abbreviation for centimeters, okay, because I'm running out of room. So our volume for this, if I had to fill it up with cubic centimeters, it would take me 72 cubic centimeters to fill this box up. That is my volume for this rectangular prism. Hopefully you can see that this is really an easy step if you understand what volume is. Going back to our lesson where we discovered the volume formula, we don't just want you to memorize it and use it, we want you to use it and then be able to picture what you're doing as you're using it. It's not good math just for you to memorize stuff. We want you to understand what's happening as you're using the formula. And if you do, these questions are pretty easy, all right? Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate the time you're spending watching these Instructive Beat lessons. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thank you so much. Check out our volume song, Instructive Beats, out.